Well, hello everyone. This is Jeff Clark with another unboxing video. Today I'm going to be opening up this box from Aviation Megastore, which is a store in the Netherlands, also known as the Luchtvaart Hobby Shop. And if you haven't gone to their website and you're interested in models, they have a huge selection of models there. They also have items for flight simulation and posters. It's a really neat place. I would love to go there at some time in my uh, life, but uh, I guess I have to wait until I get to Holland to do that. And Aviation Megastore does probably one of the better jobs as the manufacturers in terms of their packaging, and I'm very happy for that. I've had a few models get smashed up just by being stuck in a cardboard box and not really padded very well so I'm glad to see that this has made the 4,000 mile journey or so so we'll see what she looks like inside cool nice little postcard Now this was pretty much sold out everywhere I looked except for here. I'm surprised that they uh, still had them. Um, it was kind of a, a shock to see that, uh, that they did still have them considering everyone else was sold out. The price wasn't too bad. The shipping wasn't uh, the cheapest, but it never is coming from there, but it's well insured. And as you can see, this thing is in really nice condition. Now this is a, a JC Wings model, it's a 1200 scale. This is a Star Alliance model of the Airbus A340-300. I've got the SAS Scandinavian Airlines version, but uh, they do have the, the box for the Lufthansa model, Star, Star Alliance, and then also the Scandinavian on the other end, so that's kind of cool. This is a JC2 SAS-094, as I said, it's a one two hundred. The registration on this is OYKBM, and uh, been really looking forward to this. I recently traveled through Copenhagen uh, from the United States and uh, took this for or flew that flew on this aircraft on the way back to uh, from Copenhagen to Chicago. So it's nice to have this exact registration. If any of you have ever seen my unboxing videos, I try to get the actual aircraft that I've flown on and I'm glad to see that this exact one was available when I was walking through the airport and I saw the Star Alliance I was like oh man I know that there's gonna be a model of that and uh, it was gonna be a nice thing to have on the shelf so this is uh, Scandinavian Airlines which was uh, started in 1946 with the merger of the Danish group DDL the Norwegian group DNL and then also the Swedish group ABA those groups had been started in the teens of the same century and in the 20s, but it wasn't until 1946 that they got together and for, formed the Scandinavian Airlines. Uh, so they are the flag carrier of uh, Sweden, Denmark, and Norway, and uh, each of those groups that I just mentioned, mentioned were airlines from, or airline groups from those three countries. Uh, they're also a founding member of the Star Alliance, uh, which you know as of with the uh, United Airlines, also Thai Airlines and uh, Lufthansa, a few others. And um, it's kind of nice to uh, have them with their Star Alliance liveried aircraft. Now they are, as I said, the flag carrier of Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. Uh, they have a total of 182 aircraft with 90 destinations, including their main hub at Kastrup, which is uh, Copenhagen International Airport, Kastrup, K-A-S-T-R-U-P. And uh, I flew into there uh, just a couple of weeks ago on the 9th with a A330 from SAS and then on the way out in this uh, A340 here. Now this aircraft uh, was uh, purchased in uh, early part of 2002 and um, was painted in the original Scandinavians Airlines livery 
and then uh, had kind of dodged around to different uh, owners. It was originally with SAS, then it uh, with, in 2010 went to Highfly, and then in 2011 to Abigold Aviation, then in 2011 back to Highfly, and then in 2012 back to Scandinavian, and then painted in the Star Alliance livery. So it's had three or four or five different liveries painted on this same aircraft, and it's kind of cool to see this one at the end of the chain there. This is a serial number on this one's 450 from Airbus, so this is an A340-313X. First flight of this aircraft was on the 10th of January in 2002, and it was delivered on the 1st of February to SAS in 2002. The uh, engines this one has on it, the CFMI, uh, CFM Industries CFM56 engine, these have 34,000 pounds of thrust. So let's take this thing out and have a look at this out of the box here. Now the original livery was introduced in 1998 uh, with the, uh, the beige gray color that you see on the standard livery. Um, so that's kind of uh, a distinctive, distinguishing feature of this, that livery and then also this one because it also dictates the coloration for the engines and such. And then also the standard Scandinavian uh, flag they have here on the nose. Uh, that, as I said, the uh, original livery was brought out in 1998 and it was designed by the Stockholm Design Lab in the light beige, which is also Pantone light gray, which you do see right here on this engine cowling, which is the original color. So that's kind of cool to see. So let's have a look here. We'll start up at the front on the nose. We have the uh, radome cover. And the stylized uh, nose on this has been done really nicely. So you can see that it does have the right kind of profile to the nose for the A330. And then you can also see the pitot tubes here and then the static port, which is usually, usually a little bit further uh, to the aft. You also have static ports down here and then there's a little bit of writing that's next to the static port which says do not cover it etc uh, but I'm not sure if it's on there then we have our style uh, star alliance logo by the L1 door on the nose we do have the SAS logo and then we have the three flags with the flag carry the first being Norway with the white and then blue cross overlaid on a red square then the Swedish flag, which is a yellow cross on a blue square. And then the Danish flag, which is a white cross on a red square. And those are all offset flags, so the crosses are perfectly in the center. Then we have our SAS symbol here on the side. That beautiful Star Alliance, just really nice and crisp. Looks good. The paintwork is exceptional. Let's look at the L1 door here. We have the steering gear actuators, which are facing the camera right now. These are used to basically turn or extend a piston, which allows the nose gear to be turned. We have the partial registration of the aircraft, which is KBM. And the overall registration is OYKBM. And the nose gear does spin. It's a little loose. It does not come out, however. And you can see that the doors, when they're open on the A340, don't quite open all the way. So I'm not sure if this model would actually lend itself to having removable gear. But it's nice the doors are real thick and usually they're just a flat piece of metal. And then the L2 door is uh, basically the main entry door. The L3 door, which is back in the economy class section of the aircraft. And then we have the L4 door as well as the registration OYKBM. And then the horizontal stabilizer. The tail illumination light, the little dot you can see there on the horizontal stabilizer. Here is the 
intake for the auxiliary power unit, which is mounted underneath these doors, which have been really nicely reproduced. You can see the hinges and the mechanism of how that would be opened if a technician needed to work on it. And then you also have the APU exhaust hole here. And then there's also a strobe light in the tail, uh, which is kind of hard to visualize with the naked eye, but better with the camera. Then we have the Star Alliance tail. Scandinavian typically uses just a blue tail with a white SAS on it. And most of the Star Alliance liveries basically have not used any vestiges of the original livery uh, except for certain features. Whereas they'll always have some kind of detail down here, whether it be United Airlines or Lufthansa saying the actual carrier, and then some other features that are related to their engines, for instance. This is really nicely done around the horizontal stabilizer. This isn't 3D, so it's not grooved. It's just painted on there. Uh, some of the Geminis have been using a bit more of a 3D sort of tactic on that just to kind of make it a bit more realistic or to cast the right shadows. So I think that's a nice feature that they're doing. We've got this aluminum leading edge here, this non-painted can see here there's also a couple of antennas that tend to be mounted into that so let's look at the top of the aircraft a little bit of dust there we got the drip rails for the doors that have been nicely done good to see those above all the doors VHF antenna VHF antenna anti-collision beacon here this is our satellite communications antenna. The aircraft did have Wi-Fi, although I did not use it this time. These are also anti-collision beacons that, well, essentially a flashing illumination that is used during takeoff and landing. I'm not sure if they're also blinking at the same time as the anti-collision beacon. I have to kind of look into that. And then we have another VHF. This could be a TCAS or an ATC, air traffic control antenna. And it could be that, or those could be these small circles here. They don't do all of the antennas, but there would be distance measuring equipment, air traffic control, and traffic avoidance collisions, or traffic collision avoidance systems antennas uh, mounted on the top there as well. Look at the other side here. And we have the flag with the, or excuse me, this, the insignia with the flags, as I mentioned before, our Star Alliance logo, our static points, sports, and then also some pitot twos below that. Then just to the right of this loading door is the, um, mechanism for the operation. I'll put a picture of the the rear rear air, real aircraft as they were loading it while I was at the airport and you can see the guy actually running the mechanism. These are also static ports as well. Basically these are used to help the pilots measure altitude and also airspeed and a few other factors. We have the landing light here, but no jewels in this particular model. I think this model's been out since 2015, which might have preceded the era of which these manufacturers were putting the jewels in there. Gemini's a bit better about doing it than the JC Wings are, but I think JC Wings will be catching up soon. We got the Pratt & Whitney CFM, or excuse me, the CFM 56. Got our wingtip device. And then we have our green navigation light here. And then on the other side, we also have our red navigation light here. Let's look at the wings here. This aircraft does not have a 
exit walkway. We can see the inboard spoiler, the outboard spoilers, the inboard flaps, the outboard flaps, and the ailerons. There's a little wrinkle there in the paint. Not sure if it's visible. And then these are the flap track fairings. As the flaps extend, there is a, a gear that is a worm gear that's hidden by these uh, so that they are uh, more aerodynamic. This outboard one is an actual extension of the pylon and the aerodynamic effect so that the engine produces less drag off of the tail. Not sure what this little black mark is here, but I'll get the magnifying glass and see if I can uh, read what that says. It might be something to do with uh, not leaving the marked out area, which you can see this black square. Uh, they don't want passengers evacuating the aircraft to leave that area uh, so that if they do fall off the back, that's not going to fall. They're going to fall a long distance and potentially be in the exhaust of an engine, which could still be running it at power. This also has a uh, fuel dump valve in the engine of uh, the end of the uh, the middle flap track fairing there. Just see that. Let's look at the other side of the wing. Nice detail. I like they got a nice 3D uh, sort of bumps there to show you the hinge for the inboard spoiler there. Here again is our, uh, our fuel jettison valve. and then the wingtip. Let's have a look underneath here. The Star, Star Alliance livery is pretty bright, so it tends to wash out some of the colors, especially on the camera. Again, we have more antennas down here. Perhaps just a little mark there. You're also going to have the connection points most likely up here uh, for the uh, auxiliary power unit that's on the ground, the ground power unit connector. And this door here I think is the escape hatch for the uh, crew. And there's actually a small compartment under there, an elect electronics bay, but I'm not sure if that's an escape hatch for them or if it's an access panel. This is an exhaust here, or pressure release valve. I only see one, and I'm sure there would be more than one. We have the intake ducts here. These other features would be the entry points or the exhaust points for the AC cooling unit. And this aircraft would probably also have a ram air turbine. Uh, the A340 has a single middle gear, much like the L-1011, uh, or excuse me, the DC-10. Uh, the A340-300 has a single gear there. The A340-600 has a double gear there. So there would be two more wheels on this center bogey, the body gear. And then the wing gear has four wheels on it. These do tilt, and they do roll. Looks good. The gear doors look nice and detailed. See how straight everything looks. Maybe the body gear is just a bit tilted, but overall I think it looks pretty good. They've done a really nice job there with the 
mechanism for the the center gear you can see the the drive rod that it actually stores that and extends it out Here we see the rear LD3 loading door and then also the bulk door for your golf clubs and your push chairs if you have them and the partial registration there again OYKBM and there's another antenna down here and then this is probably the emergency locator transmitter antenna I think this is likely to be another pressure release valve like the one that I pointed out on the front. And then these would be antennas or portals for draining the lavatories and such like that. On the underside of the wing we see the flaps again and the flap trap fairings and the hinges for the ailerons. And our registration again on the underside of the wing. Looks really good. The paintwork looks really nice. I really like riding on these uh, A330s and A340s. They're nice to look at. They're very comfortable. Um, when you look at a wide body aircraft, you really see how quickly it goes from the tip of the nose to becoming wide enough and you can imagine the cock, uh, the pilot sitting there in front of those two center cockpit windows and that cockpit is already in the region of 10 to 15 feet wide by the time it gets to the bulkhead so it's quite a uh, drastic increase in size that you can see on pretty much any wide body but the 330s are really nice looking aircraft Okay, well, I'll get the stand out, and then uh, we'll take a look and see how she looks there. Looks really nice. The A330 and the A340 have a very graceful, long wing, and uh, it's an impressive-looking machine in the air. I really, I've really flown on the A340-600 with Iberia before. I have one of their JC Wings models, which I really like. I also have a Phoenix of the A340-600, and this is my first A340-300 model. But uh, it's nice to have this one because it's one I've uh, been on before. So, All right, let's check out the stand, and we'll get back to you shortly. Okay, so I got the model stand out of the box. And I'll just take this blue covering off here. This is just so it doesn't get scratched up. One of the things that did happen with the stand is the, the plate fell out. So I'll try to glue that back on here. I'm learning the best tool to have in uh, when you get models, there's a fresh thing of super glue. Put that on there without screwing it up. All right, so yeah, I kind of got a little bit excess there. I'll get that cleaned up. So I got the plate put back on, but I got a little aggressive with my uh, cleaning and took off some of the marker there so that's my fault but it's JC Wings's fault for not having it glued in there properly so a little disappointed by that but I'm gonna count my losses and leave them where they are let's put this in here a little floppy but doesn't look too bad pretty nicely off of the center gear there we'll see how it looks on the Stand here. Cool. 
Looks good and straight. It's got nice posture. The crisp coloration of the the white of the fuselage itself and the black tail and the black wingtips with the red look really neat. I tried to use my little compressed air technique to turn these fan blades, but it didn't work so good. These one, this one here, the f number four engine does not turn. I don't want to push it too hard. The number three engine does turn very so slightly. And the number two engine does turn. And the number one engine does turn as well. They uh, don't turn particularly freely, so when I blow air into them, they don't spin like some of the other models I have, specifically the JC Wings A340 and their other counterparts. Uh, in previous occasions, the fan has actually spun. I think perhaps it's because this is the 300, so the engine is that much smaller. But uh, one thing that's nice about the engine is they do have some good detail of the the blocker doors for the reverse thruster so these actually deploy and you can see the little Scandinavian Airlines there written on it too really nice so overall I'm really happy with the model maybe it would have been a bit better to have the stand work out a bit more in my favor I should have paid a bit more closer attention to what I was doing if you have that problem, do not follow my lead. I tried to zoom in on this, uh, what's on the top of the wing, but was not able to uh, see what it says. Whatever's written there is in very small font. It might be a uh, lockdown point for if somebody is doing some kind of inspection where they would have the ability to uh, attach a safety uh, safety measure so they could avoid having someone fall off the wing and hit the ground. So as I said, this is a member of the Star Alliance uh, for Scandinavian Airlines. They have eight of these A340 or 300s, which they will probably be phasing out here. These are all around 15, 16 years old, so they're probably reaching the end of their lifetime. I'm not sure how many uh, hours or cycles this particular aircraft has. Uh, this is um, in a three-class configuration, so there is no first class with this aircraft. It is basically uh, business classes from this first section, and then two windows here worth of, uh, of business class. And then there's a broke window, as in there is no glass there. It's actually not shown here. This third window would be block out, clear, clear, and then a block out. Then these four rows are economy plus, and then we have another few rows of economy plus there. So there's 40 business class seats, and then there is another 28 in the economy plus. There's 179 seats, and basically that's from uh, mid-wing here to the rear of the aircraft. Uh, there is uh, the seat I was in is 44A, which is this fifth window past the L3 door. And I had a really nice view out over the wing. And I did do a trip report video of that. And I will put that up on YouTube. Or actually, it's already on YouTube, but I'll put a link to it in this video if you'd like to check out the real thing. It's nice to see the, the takeoff and the landing. The takeoff was a little bit blurry because it was rainy when we took off from Copenhagen, but the, after the, the climb out and the rest of the flight is was pretty clear and pretty comfortable. So this uh, model's been a great addition to my collection. Uh, it was nice to actually have flown on this particular one. That was flight 943 on the 14th of September, so not that long ago. Uh, it was nice to take this aircraft and fly on the A340-300 with its maximum takeoff weight 610,000 pounds, that's over 300 tons, man. It's just such an amazing feat that these things can even get off the ground. So anyway, thanks so much for watching as always, and uh, stay tuned. I got another uh, SAS video that will be coming up soon. I've got another A340-300 coming, uh, coming up, which will be the, the high fly and the uh, Maripuri, Maripuri 
uh, livery, which is an all black livery, including the engines. It's a sweet looking aircraft. If you haven't uh, got that coming, it's a pre-order. I just ordered that today, so that should be on its way soon, plus a couple others. So stay tuned for more, and thanks again for watching as always, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks again. Bye-bye.